<laughs> Man your oars. To tickle your sides. The winter before, I was drinking in Stavanger with some companions. With us in the Mead Hall were men of Bard Jarl's clan, one of which was a poet named Halli, called Sarcastic Halli by most. Seven ale horns into his night, Halli stood upon his table and called across the room to another man, a scald named Chudolf. Chudolf! he yelled. I can compose a more beautiful poem. Tongue and fine words. The room laughed. Judolf loudest of all. I accept your challenge, sarcastic Halley. He shouted. Allow oh, me to begin. Judolf then spoke this verse. Sad Halley drowns in horns of hubris, squeaking like a stoat. Yet proudly the pup calls it poetry. The room laughed again. With Halley joining in. Then, Halley tripped across the room and opened his mouth to speak his verse. From his throat erupted a jet of vomit into Trudolf's face. His only composition that night, of which is he seemed most proud. <laughs> Sing us a song, we'll share a tale. Here is a tale I do not often tell. There was a clan, little known in the south, composed entirely of warrior women. And I... What? Why you did not stay with them when they asked you to be the king, dog, I will never understand. <laughs> you South Skulls got a story. Unar the Ugly was an excellent sailor who could pilot a longship entirely on his own. This is why King Sigvaldi kept him around. In all other matters, Unar was a cruel, anxious, and humorless man. He was one of the most unlikable people I have ever known. One year, I recall we had invited some carls from the England clan to dine with us. As we were serving ale, we came to find that we had none left. It so happened that the ale had run out just before reaching Unar's hall. This raised in him a word storm, and he accused Sigvaldi of treachery. Every Can't race the sail yet. at Unar for raising such a fuss. This made Unar angrier than before. He stormed sail out. 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 Short time later, we heard him yelling through the door of the hall. I set this good pole upon the men of England for their dishonor. We looked outside and saw that Unar had severed one of the heads of the England's horses stuck it upon a hazel branch when he saw we need an epic tale we all remember when Eivor gave orders to we'll pick up from there not right now all right Back to the story. We all remember when Eivor gave orders to attack Kjotve's clan in Avalsnes. I knew even then our chance at victory was slim. It was a fool's errand. But Eivor demanded we strike, and I am not one to disobey my superior. 
Such is the mark of an honorable man. You all know what followed. We set upon Kyotve's men and were overwhelmed. You lot were captured and fit to be butchered. And Eivor here, carried off to be sold into slavery. A fate worse than a fine death. But there is one fact you do not know. In the initial fight, I came upon Kyotve, cowering in an empty house. He did not see me, and I came within two arm's lengths of him. I could have slain him! A fast stroke of my axe, ending our troubles. But I held back. Why? Because I remembered my oath to Eivor. Yes. Years ago, Eivor had staked the claim on Kyotve's life. So I left the Bakrout alone. Yes. A pity, Dag. There is no one living who can verify this incredible tale. <laughs> Let's hear a story. When Sing I was 11 rain. winters old... Need your eyes, my friend. 